Okay, so I'm going to do the normal talking back and forth between the questions and then our paperwork. So for our very first one, it is way, way back to unit one, right? Unit one was all about the circles. So way back to unit one, and it says write the standard form of the equation. Oh, another thing. I forgot to mention this, and this is super important. On the final exam, you get one note sheet. You are going to create this note sheet. I am not creating this note sheet. I don't know what you put on the note sheet. Only thing that matters on this note sheet is that it's one page and it's front side only. So you have to fit whatever you want to put on there on one front side of one sheet of paper. If you want to write the whole review, tiny, 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 all of these 50 something questions, <laughs> all the solutions, that's up to you, okay? I normally don't like people writing down examples because I'll tell you what happens is that instead of writing the five that's in the problem you got, you start writing the four in the example that you wrote on your paper and you're doing the wrong problem, right? Um, it happens so much that that's why I usually make the note sheets for you. That was the whole reason why I did it was because when y'all do it, y'all use the wrong numbers, <laughs> okay? So you can do it. Just be super careful not to use the wrong numbers, okay? So this one says, write the standard form of the equation of a circle with the endpoints of a diameter. So I'm actually going to draw the picture first. And I have 2 and 2 and 2 and 12. And it wants the correct equation. So let me show you what I've drawn. I've just drawn that. They had the same x value, which is why I put them one over the other, right? So if I were to draw my axes, it would probably be something like this. So x value, x value, y value, y value, right? It's not to scale because that's supposed to be 12 and there's no way I can fit that many little marks, right? But you get the idea. That's kind of what it would look like, okay? So this one is two, two, and two, 12. Well, in order for me to write the standard form of an equation, it has to be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equal to r squared. And then h and k is the center of the circle. And then r is the radius, right? So if I know these measurements, I need to figure out the center, what's in here in the middle. What would I do to figure out that point that's in the middle? What's another name for that besides saying point in the middle? What's another way I can say that? Midpoint, right? Isn't that what midpoint means? It means the point in the middle. <laughs> so I'm going to use my midpoint formula. And that's how I'll get the center. Okay. And the midpoint formula tells me to add the two x values together and divide by two, add the two y values together and divide by two. So what I end up with is four over two, which is two, and 14 over two, which is seven. And so then that's my center. Now my radius is going to be the distance between the midpoint and one of these points. Now I could have done the line this way, or I could have done it up there, right? It's just a matter of me choosing which one. It should be the same distance, although I know I don't draw well, and it doesn't look like it, but they should be the same, okay? So in order for me to find the radius, I'm going to take the distance between this point, 2, 2, and my center, 2, 7, okay? Which is going to be the square root of the x value subtracted and then the y value is subtracted. And it's always the second one. Here it didn't matter, right? They're both twos. So you can't tell what order they're in. But when you're doing the y values, they're not the same. It has to be the second one minus the first one. Honestly, does it matter? Because you're going to square it and it's all going to turn positive anyway, right? So it really doesn't matter. Just make sure you do x's in one parentheses and y's in the other, OK? So when I do this, that's going to give me 0. That's going to give me 5. So I get the square root of 25, which is just five. 
So then how do I put this in there? It's going to be x minus the x value of the center, which is 2 squared, plus y minus the y value, right, of the center, which is 7. And then equal to my radius squared, which is 5. So it's actually this equation. If I had any double negatives, I'd change them now. But I didn't in this case. And so this is the final answer, OK? When you're on the test, make sure you look very, very carefully, because I still have a few people in this class and the online class that you have it right on paper, but then you're just picking the one that looks real close to your answer, but like something's not the same, OK? So make sure that you're paying super, super close attention to those options. I think it's B, right? Does that one look like mine? These look like they're swapped the wrong way. And the other ones all have plus signs. So I'm gonna say B. Now you can check your answers, they're at the back. So if you do eventually work on this by yourself, because we're not gonna cover all of them today, right? If you do get to the end, um, where are the answers? There they are. It says E, what did I do? It's not what I got. Oh, I see what I did. Do you see what I did? Look at that second point. It's 12x value, right? And 2y value. Look what I wrote on my paper. I wrote it backwards, didn't I? OK, so that should have not been. It should have been 12, 2. So that means totally different circle then, doesn't it? I am going to have this point, but where's the other point going to be? The other point is going to be way over here at 12, right? And two for the y value. So my circle should have actually looked something like this. Again, I can't draw, but you get the idea, right? And so then my midpoint would have been in here. So let's see. If I do this correctly now, I should be adding 12 and 2 over 2, and then 2 and 2 over 2, the x values and then the y values. So we do get these backwards, 7 and then 2. And then we already know this will probably coincidentally come out the same, but it should matter. So if I subtract the x's, I'm going to change that to a 7. And then I'm going to change this one to a 2, because the y values are now both 2s. Then that means the 0 is over here, and the 5 is over here. It's actually a negative 5, isn't it? But what's negative 5 squared? Still positive 25, right? So I still get the same radius. But my x value is a 7, not a 2. So don't do what I did, <laughs> right? <laughs> Make sure you write down your points correctly. It happens. That's why I usually make y'all do y'all's paperwork because I know that weird things like that happen. Or you copy down like the wrong problem. You put a plus instead of a minus and you know what you're doing. You just started with the wrong thing, right? Okay. So now that should match E, but let's make sure. Ah, yes, now it does. See that one, but it has the wrong radius, right? It doesn't have it squared, so it is E. Okay, now we can move to number two. Number two is a little bit easier than this one because they already gave me the center. And then they give me another solution point. That just means another point on the graph, on the circle. Okay. And it wants me to do the same thing, a standard form equation. So for here, you basically have your center, it's 6, 1. And then at 5, 9, you have another point there. And this is the center 
So your circle is basically going like this, something like that. Okay. I like to draw them just so I can make sense of how I'm going to get the radius and all of that, right? So I already have the center, right? So this is H and this is K because I already have the center. But I am missing that radius, which I need to find, okay? So in order to do that, I'm going to find that distance between these two points. And so they're already there. So I'm going to take one X value minus the other and then one Y value minus the other. We end up with one and negative eight. So we end up with one plus 64, which is the square root of 65. Now that one's not nice. It does not simplify. So it's just square root of 65. However, when you plug it all in, you get X minus the X value of the center then y minus the y value of the center equal to the radius squared, right? What happens when you square a square root? They just cancel each other out, exactly. So I just have a regular 65 there then, okay? And so now we have that one. So let's, I'm gonna keep checking them because <laughs> I already messed up one today. So X minus six and Y minus one. It looks like D, right? That looks like what I have on my paper. Let me go all the way to the bottom and check. Okay, yay, we did get this one right. It's D. Okay, moving on, number three. Who can look at that and tell me what the domain is? It is all real numbers. Why? Mm, it's quadratic. There's no fractions. There's no um, no x's in the denominator. No logarithms. No exponentials. None of that stuff. No radicals. Nothing. So that one will be all real numbers. Let me just show you what I'm writing, just so that someone, if they're reading this, they know why we said that. Okay. So in case anyone reads that, they'll know what it is. Now, what was the answer? That would have been B. B is just straight up all real numbers, right? All these other ones have conditions on them and that's not what we have. Okay, number four though is not as nice, right? Number four is way more complicated. So number four, has two issues, right? It has a radical and it has a denominator. So we have to remember our restrictions on domain for both of those situations, okay? So one of the situations we know is the denominator cannot equal zero, right? And we also know that the radicand, that's the fancy word, the inside of the radical is the other word. <laughs> but it has to be greater than or equal to zero, okay? So I'm gonna put inside of the radical. In case someone looks back and says inside, inside of what, right? So I'm just putting details in there. So for the denominator, that's the four plus X. So that apparently cannot equal zero. And if I solve for X, we get that X cannot equal a negative four. Now for the radical restriction, we know that the X plus four inside the radical has to be a positive number or zero. If it's negative, it's imaginary, right? So it just needs to be positive or it can actually equal zero. So I'm gonna solve this side for X and I get this, but now you need to put these two statements together, right? And so how do you, what do you write when you're trying to put those two together? 
This one says x is greater than or equal to negative four, but then this one says x cannot equal negative four. So what does that do to this expression? Mm -hmm. It gets, gets rid of that little bar, right? It's, it cannot equal, right? So you just have x strictly greater than negative four. So if I go look at those options, the only one that says x greater than negative four is this one right here, okay? So then that's gonna have to be my answer is C. Now, let me go check three and four, we got B and C. B and C. Okay, and then we have apparently B, 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 four Bs in a row next. <laughs> There's a lot of Bs on this one, I don't know why. It's computer generated. But I just noticed when I was looking at the answer key, there's a lot of Bs. Okay, now this one asks us to use this graph to figure out the domain. So I'm definitely gonna zoom in a little bit further so we can figure out what that domain is, okay? Now remember, domain is from left to right, okay? So what you do is you imagine like all of these points being smushed onto the x-axis. And if you smush all of them on, isn't it gonna be a solid line up until here, right? But you have an open circle here and an open circle there. So what would be on the number line? It would still be an open circle, right? And then if you take all of these blue points and you smush them on down to the x-axis, it's just gonna fill up the whole x-axis, right? So your domain is almost negative infinity to infinity. You just have one hole here in the middle, okay? And that is at negative four. So your domain should be this thing here. There's like two of them. Actually, it's the only one that has it, isn't it? So your domain should be this. Now let's go verify that that's the range, okay? Range is when you take all of these little points and you smush them onto the y-axis, okay? So if I do that, there's gonna be an open dot here at this negative one. And if I smush all of these onto the y-axis and then these over here to the y-axis, I'm gonna have another hole right there at the origin, aren't I? Okay. So I have a hole here and then all of this is solid. And then this will have a hole here and then all the rest of that will be solid. So the range goes from negative infinity up to the first hole, which is at negative one. Then there's a gap there and it continues where the other hole is from zero to infinity, okay? And so that does match here. And they are open circles, which is why those are parentheses, right? And not brackets, okay? You would only do the brackets if they had solid dots, okay? Not the little circle dots. So five was a very visual problem. I don't know what to write on the paper. <laughs> I'm just going to write the answer. The answer was B. Okay, number six. Let's see what number six looks like. Um, this one says use the vertical line test to determine in which of the graphs Y is not a function. So they want to know the ones that are not functions. Now choice A is A, B, C, D, and E. Um, and then of course you have these that are just by themselves. Okay. And another graph over there. So let's go see. Does this one pass the vertical line test? No, as soon as you draw one right there, it crosses it two times, right? Does this one pass the vertical line test? It does, no matter how many vertical lines you draw, they only go through the blue line once, right? Or the blue graph. And then what about this one? That one passes too. It might look a little funny right around here, but it does go, it does pass, okay? And then what about this one? It does. Even though these get real close and they're real close to each other, the vertical lines are there and none of them cross more than one time, okay? So it looks like only B is the only one, right? So we're definitely not going to choose this then, because this said all of them, right? So B is it.
All I'm writing on the paper is visualize the vertical line test because I don't know what else to write there. It's literally one of the ones you look at and you just know. The thing about the final exam is there's quite a few of those, which is nice, right? I don't have to spend time writing stuff. Okay, this one says, determine the intervals over which the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So this is another one that is visual, okay? Um, is it ever increasing? I'll ask you that. As you look at it from left to right, you trace the graph from left to right. If I start here and I start tracing that, what is it doing? It's staying constant, right? And then even if I go look at the other section and I start from the left side of that section and I trace it, what is it doing? It's decreasing. But nowhere in here is a blue section that is going up, right? So there's nothing that's increasing. So immediately when you notice that all of these guys are bad, aren't they? Those two, it's not happening, okay? But what's the interval for this? So if I were to take that whole line and just smush it onto the x-axis, it covers negative infinity to what? To one, and then does it have a parenthesis or a bracket there? A parenthesis, because it's an open circle, right? So, so far, that would be negative infinity to one, this one. So I'm pretty sure that outrules everything else now. So it's gotta be B. But let's just go look at the other one. If I smush all of this onto the x-axis and all of this onto the x-axis, it covers from one to infinity. But then that would have a parenthesis or a bracket. This one's tricky. Do you notice what it has? Why does it have a parenthesis? Not because of this guy. It has to do with calculus and we're not in calculus yet. <laughs> Back when we were learning it, I just said, don't ever put brackets on increasing, decreasing, and constant. And if you'll notice in all the choices, there's no brackets, okay? But it's because in calculus, you'll learn the actual definition of what makes something increase or decrease. And once you learn that definition, you'll realize that it's undefined at a spot. And so you can't say that it's increasing at one spot. You need another spot to determine, okay? So that's why they never include the one point. They just say it is here, but it can't at one specific spot, okay? It's interesting, you'll learn it at Cal 1. <laughs> You're almost there. <laughs> one more class and then you'll be there. Okay, so let me see, that one was also B. I'm gonna put visualize the intervals and remember, there are no brackets in intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant. Okay, now we can move on. Number eight. I think we're still in unit two right now. Because I know the domain started in unit two, the vertical line test was in unit two, and the increasing and decreasing was in unit two. I cannot remember if this is still unit two or if this is in unit three now. But we're gonna go for it. So let me write down the problem. and they want us to solve the inequality. There's something that we need to talk about before I can solve that inequality. And that is that you cannot do the problem unless it has a zero on one side. You just can't. There's no way to determine the intervals or anything until it has zero on one side, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna minus this one over. Oops, it would have a minus one then now, right? So it would have a minus one and then now I'd have a zero, okay? Then what you wanna do is you want to, I have two options. I can set it equal to zero now to find 
the critical values or key points, whatever word they used in this section. It's basically the people on the number line that you're gonna mark, okay? I need to find those numbers because those are the magic numbers that break up the intervals, right? And then once I know what the intervals look like, I can test each interval, okay? But I've gotta get those numbers. So you have two choices. You can either foil this out and combine the negative one with it and then factor it, or you can just do um, the extracting roots part from here, okay? I think extracting roots is faster if it's possible for me to do it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add that one back over now that I have an equal sign and not an inequality. Um, and then I'm gonna take the square root on both sides. But when I do that, I get plus or minus, don't I? And what is the square root of one? Just one, but I have plus or minus one, right? So I actually have x minus four equal to positive one and I have x minus four equal to negative one, okay? And then I can just solve from there. I'll do it the other way on another piece of paper just to show you get the same thing, okay? So my key numbers are five and three. On the number line though, three would be on the left, right? And five would be on the right. So make sure you get them in here in the correct order, okay? So the numbers they got are five and three. Now, let's take this. I'll move my paper in just a second if you're still copying. Okay. Um, let's take that and let's do it not extracting roots. Let's say your brain said, well, I need to combine this in there. So let me foil this out. That would be an X minus four times an X minus four, right? So you get x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16. And then you'd have to combine that in there. So I get x squared minus 8x plus 15. And then to come up with those, I would factor this x and x. And it looks like the numbers are going to be 3 and 5. But in order for me to get a positive when I multiply and a negative when I combine, they both have to be negative, right? And then you set this one equal to zero and you set that one equal to zero and you get the two solutions, right? All the same exact solutions. You see how it's more steps, right? Than the other one. But if your brain goes this way, it's not wrong, okay? I just wanted to point that out. As long as you're not breaking any rules, you're fine, okay? Okay, now let's see, we still have the test. So I think I'm gonna use some color in here just to point out that I'm talking about test points. So what number can you test on this side? Yes, anytime you can, right? Always try zero. What about in the middle here? Four, and then what about on this side? Sure, okay. Now when you plug them in, make sure you're plugging them into the original, okay? It really doesn't matter. I could plug them in here or I could plug them in there. Just don't plug them in the equation, okay? Because you change that to an equals, right? Or we did. So always use the inequality. So let's see, zero minus four squared, is that greater than or equal to one? Well, I'd end up with negative four squared, which is 16, isn't it? Is that greater than one? It is. So this section works. I'll talk about what circle goes there in a second. Let's try the next one. We get four minus four squared, which is zero squared, which is still zero. Is that greater than or equal to one? No, so this section will not be part of our answer. And then finally, the last one, that's two, two squared is four, and is four greater than or equal to one? Yes, so this section works, okay? Now, what kind of dots go here? Look at the original. Would it be solid dots or open dots? Say it again. Did you say something? Solid. Yeah, yeah, good. So then we're gonna have solid there and solid there. 
Sometimes the computer doesn't use dots, it used brackets or parentheses. If it used brackets or parentheses, what would be here? A bracket, and then over here too, right? So just look at the choices because they'll give you that hint, okay? It looks like they use brackets. Um, it looks like this one's mine, right? It's got the three here in the middle and then going that way with the bracket, and then the five here in the middle going that way with the bracket. This one's not right. It's at a two, right? This is completely backwards. <laughs> it's like not even close. I hope nobody picks that one. Um, this one's also completely backwards. We already know that the smaller number is supposed to go on the left, right? And the bigger number is supposed to go on the right. So this, these two are just bad all together. Um, but we didn't get four or six. And we definitely didn't get all real numbers. So let's see, we got B. Okay, that one wasn't, it seems like that one wasn't too far long ago. <laughs> Number nine. It says solve the equation and write the complex solutions in standard form. What's the only way you're gonna get complex solutions? Is if you do what? The only way you can get those numbers is if you do the quadratic formula. That's the only way you'll get the i's. You can't get the i's from factoring. You can't get the i's from extracting the roots, none of that. So you have to do the quadratic formula on that one. Now, which one of these it actually is, I don't know. Let's go look. So here the A is equal to one, the B is a positive 10, and the C is a positive 29. So we're gonna go do our formula. Negative B plus or minus B squared minus four times A times C, and then two times A. So we get negative 10 plus or minus, and then what is that? That is I get negative 16 inside of my square root. So then the negative will come out as an I, right? But what's the square root of 16 without the negative? It's four. So this becomes four i, but it's still all over two, right? So then we do this guy over two and the four i over two. I end up with negative five plus or minus two i, okay? And so I think in the choices, they just have them separated, right? You'll have negative five plus two i and then negative five minus two i. That is B. Okay, number 10. We can use our calculator a little bit on this, but some of it, no, we cannot. Okay. I don't think your calculator actually does the fifth root of 192. I think it does give you a decimal. I don't think it rationalizes it like the square root. Like if I were to do the square root of 192, it simplifies it for me, right? But it, it doesn't do it with any other root, okay? So I'm gonna have to do this by hand or from scratch, however you wanna call that. And this is the best method to do this problem. You take the 192 and you start breaking it up into its primes. So let's come up with anything. What number will go into 192? Any number. Does one stick out at you? Two, because it's even, right? So let's do two times what? So I'm gonna hit divide by two in my calculator. So apparently two times 96 is 192, but this is not prime. Let's break that again. It's still even, right? So let's do two again. We get 48. That's still even and definitely not prime. So let's do two again. Still even. Oops, wrong number. 
There we go. We get 12. I think I could do these now. Six, then three. And then three is prime, isn't it? So we can stop there. So what do we get here? We get a three, of course. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna group those together because it's a fifth root, okay? So I'm gonna do two to the fifth power and that covers all of these. But I still have one more, don't I? So I'm gonna have an extra two here. I'm gonna do the same thing with the variables. I'm gonna break this up into one of the X's and then X to the fifth. And the same thing with the Y's, I'm gonna break up y with two and then five. Don't those two together make y to the seventh, right? Okay, now what happens is, is all the people that have the fifth powers are going to come out, but the, the radical and the powers cancel each other, okay? So this will come out, but it'll come out as a two. This will come out, but it'll come out as just an x. And then the last one will come out but just away, okay? Everything else is gonna stay in that house. The three, the two, the extra X, and the extra Y squared. And then it's just a matter of multiplying those together to get your final, final answer. So this was a little bit of work, okay? It's because it had a fifth power. If it was a square root, I would have been able to do the number in my calculator and letters kind of the same way like this. I would have just had to have x squared, x squared, x squared. And over here, I would have had to have y squared, y squared, y squared, and then extra y. We'll see if anything looks like that in the choices. I think it's this one. Yep, yep, yep. So E. Let me go double check. E for number 10. Yes, and then we got two A's next. What's this problem doing here? <laughs> it's out of order. Didn't we already do the circles? I don't know. It's a different kind of problem though, right? This one's super easy because they give you the center, which is the HK that you need, but then they like also give you the radius. And normally we were finding the distance to get the radius, but they already gave it to us, right? So that one's super easy. You should be able to pick it out. It would just be X minus this number. So all three of, all four of these are an option out. And then Y minus this value and all of those match so far. This is not the correct form at all. Neither is this. There's supposed to be a number on the other side, right? So these are both out. I'm down to A and B. What's supposed to go on the right-hand side? R squared. So what happens if I take seven squared? It's the 49, so it should be A. So my paper, I'm just gonna write this all out. So I'm writing X minus the H plus Y minus the K and then equal to this squared. And so we get that one. I forgot what answer it was, it was A, right? Okay, let's go look at number 12. Oh, it's another one of those, so we get more practice. It's just another fifth root though. So apparently it looks like something's gonna be stuck inside and most likely a two. Are there gonna be any X's stuck inside? No, right, because you have five and five, right? And don't those undo each other? So the X is gonna come out. Now I need you to notice that there's two of them that have the X outside the radical but they're like tricky because it looks like it's in the radical, right? With the parentheses and everything. 
But if you notice, the little house stops before the X. So the X is not inside the house, okay? And we know that the X is gonna come out because the five and the five match, right? This thing and this thing are gonna undo each other. So already I am down to these two. And I'm pretty sure from 64, in order for it to have a 64 here, something would have had to have come out, right? So just by process of like logic and um, deduction, I would think that it's A, okay? But I'm gonna do it, play with that 64 like we did with the 192, and we'll get to this answer, okay? Now, mind you, mine might look a little bit different from theirs, but it's exactly the same thing, okay? So the 64, it is an even number, right? So I am going to break it up by two and I get 32. That's still an even. So I'm going to keep doing this pattern until it's not even anymore. I don't think it's ever not going to be even, but I'm down to two and two and those can't go any lower, right? So how many twos do you have? One, two, three, four, five. Those are going to go together because of the fifth root. So to the fifth, and then I have just one extra two, right? So that's the extra two. And then X to the fifth is X to the fifth. So this one's gonna come out as a single two with no exponent. This is gonna come out as a single X, no exponent. And you're still gonna have this two stuck inside. This is the answer. They chose to write it like this and put the X over here, right? And then they chose to stick parentheses around. Does it matter? Isn't it all still multiplied together? Okay. So this is what they made it look like, but it's equivalent to what you get when you do it by hand. Okay. I just want to point it out because it was really tricky. I was like, wait a minute, none of these match mine. And then I was like, oh, little cheeky bastards. They got right in there and didn't put the X under the bar. Okay. So be careful. Okay, this one was on one of the tests. I remember this one. That's the radical form. This is the rule you're using. Okay, so you can go from radical form to exponential, exponent form. Not exponential, right? That's different. But exponent form or radical form. So notice that this number is like the X, okay? So when I go in to put it into exponent form, the 3.5 is gonna be like the X. I just need to figure out the exponent. So what is the index here? Two, when it's just the square root, it's a two, right? And then what's the exponent when there isn't one? A one. So then notice the exponent on the inside goes in the numerator, and then the index goes in the denominator. So that means this will be my numerator, and then the two will be my denominator, okay? And so it needs to look like that. I do not know which one of those it is. It is D. That's the one that's the correct one, right? So D. Okay, that one, no, it says without on a calculator, I'm not looking at your paperwork until after you've already turned in the test. So am I gonna know if you use the calculator or not? Not really, unless I go look, right? What's gonna happen is like, oh, you didn't use the calculator. You're not gonna get extra points on that one problem, okay? Um, so you could get away with it on the final. It's just not on the regular test. I didn't let you get away with it, right? I'm gonna do it both ways so that you can see both ways, okay? So without the calculator, the first thing you have to attack is this negative exponent. In order to make that negative exponent not negative anymore, you have to flip the fraction over, okay? So this fraction will become 64 over one, but this one third won't be negative anymore. Okay, well then that's really just a 64 then, isn't it? With the one third. And we just know from this rule, we're now gonna go in this direction. So the negative is gonna stay on the outside, but I'm gonna have a radical with the 64 on the inside, 
what's going to be the index of this radical? The denominator, which is three. And then what's gonna be the exponent? The numerator, which is one, good. And so then you have the cube root of 64 and that I can type in my calculator. Or if you don't know, does anybody know what that is? Just by memory? It's four. Uh-huh, four times four is 16 times another four is 64. Okay, so this is negative four, right? Now, again, unless you're trying to get the points in case you got it wrong, but if you're using a calculator, should you have gotten it wrong? No, right? So you should be able to get those points anyway. So the, thing, the computer's not gonna know whether you use the calculator or not. So you can put minus parentheses. Just make sure you do the negative and not the actual minus symbol, okay? So I type in the negative symbol there, parentheses, fraction one over 64, Go to the side, close it, get the exponent button and write negative fraction one over three. Does that look exactly like it looks on my paper? As long as it looks exactly like it does on your paper, go ahead and press enter. And don't I get the same thing? Okay. So you can do this problem in the calculator when you're taking the final. But if you're worried that somehow you typed it in the calculator wrong, then you can try to do it by hand and then I can try to give you points if you got it wrong and if you're borderline, right? Hope I have enough room to do 15 right there. I don't know that I will. Oh yeah, it's not one of those. Okay, so this one, okay. I can already outrule three of those. This is transformations, okay? So if you had a regular graph, f of x, right? And that's this graph here, it's f of x. Look at the shape of the graph. When you do an add or subtract on the inside, it literally only does a shift left or right. And that's it, okay? If you do a plus or minus number on the outside, it does a shift up or down. But in neither of those shifts does it ever change the shape, okay? So if you notice, there's three options down here that have completely different shapes. This has, it's all broken up, right? That's not gonna happen just by shifting it. If I slide something over, it doesn't just change like that, right? Same thing with this one, that's bad, right? And then the same thing with this one. So the only two that could really possibly be it is these two. But even if you look at this one closer, you'll notice that this one also changes shape, okay? Look at this piece up here. Isn't it straight and then straight again? And over here, doesn't it tilt a little bit more that way and tilt a little bit more this way? So even that one doesn't have the correct shape, okay? The only one that has the correct shape is this one. But how did they get there? They shifted everything. And it looks like they shifted everything to the right. So they went one, 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 and one. So all those X values, notice where they are now. This one's at zero, at one, at four, and now at five, okay? Everything got shifted over. Which one is that, D? I have to write something in there, but that one was a visual one. Is I need to go look up that one because I noticed that too. Um, I need to go look up. I need to go look at the final and see if there's a problem similar to that one on there, and make sure that it has the correct answer. Because I don't think that that's the correct answer. Because when you do add right here on the inside, when you add, it's supposed to shift it to the left, and then when you minus, it shifts it to the right. So either one thing's wrong, either they have all these graphs wrong, or this should have been a minus right here in this plus, okay? So this one's a bad one, bad. <laughs> Let me double check the one that's on the test. And if it's bad, of course, I'll fix it. But if it's good, then I'll talk about it. 
Okay, so now this one says, because we're going to talk about that in just a second to do that problem, and then you're going to be like, wait a minute, then 15 is wrong, <laughs> as soon as I mentioned the rules on number 16. So number 16 says you start with the graph of square root of x. Now I'm going to draw on my paper what regular square root of x looks like, um, and then they want us to get this graph, okay? So there's some transformations that obviously happen. Um, where's this point though? It looks like it's at five, five, right? So five and five, and I'm gonna put the dot there. And then it goes downward, doesn't it? So let me show you on my paper. So this is the one on the paper, the question, okay? The one that I drew is what a regular square root of X looks like, okay? So there's a few things that have happened. There's three things that have happened, right? One is it shifted up five, didn't it? Right, that little dot, it went up five, which means in the X, I'm gonna have to do plus five to make it go up five. And notice that it's outside the radical. To go up or down, it has to be outside. So you have your basic function. If you add a number, it's gonna go up by however many units that is. If you minus a number outside the basic function, it's gonna go down that many units, right? Then this also not only went up five, but it also went to the right five units, didn't it? Okay, which means I need to minus five on the inside. Because when you do a number on the inside, I shouldn't put five, I should put any number. This will move it to the right. And then if you do X plus a number, it should move it to the left, which is opposite of what number 15 did, okay? Which is why number 15 is bad. I think they meant to do this in order to get those answers, okay? <coughs> And then one more thing that we need to know for sure is the reflections. So if you have a negative outside the basic function, it's going to reflect over the X axis, which means it goes basically up and down, right? If it flips over the X axis. Then there's also the one where you have the negative inside the basic function. And that one reflects over the y-axis. So that one's like a mirror. It goes this way, like a revolving door, okay? When it flips over the x-axis, it's just rotating from here to here, okay? So what is it doing? It was going upward, and if I go up and I go over, it still should be going upward, shouldn't it? But it's not. It's going downward. So that flipping that's going, it's happening downward, not like a revolving door that you walk through, right? So because it's going downward, it's actually over the x-axis, which means there should be a negative on the outside of the basic function, okay? And so this is what I should be looking for in my choices. This should help for note sheet stuff. So let's see, we need a minus minus and a plus. It looks like B. I'm gonna go check the solutions and make sure they have that one right. So 15, what did we say that one was? D, yeah, that's what they had. So it had to have been an error, it's supposed to be a minus. And then for 16, they do have B. Okay, good. Where am I at? It's not there yet. Here we go. Okay, so number... Now it's backwards. It's, they're giving you the function, and then they want you to basically tell them what happened, right? So this one, there's really not much to write down on this problem. It's just recognizing what's happening and then selecting the right thing. So you do see this negative outside the bars, don't you? So that means it's going to reflect over the x-axis, okay? So already, we're only down to three options because A and D are not the correct axes, okay? Then you have this minus five on the outside. Well, that is a vertical shift. Vertical means up or down, right? So, but because it's negative, does it go up or does it go down? 
it's down. And notice that the three choices that we have left with X axis say downward, upward, and then to the right. And we know it's not these two, right? So it has to be option B, okay? I'll figure out what I'm gonna write on that paper <laughs> after we get out. I gotta write something so someone can read this and follow. Now we're getting to unit four a little bit. No, this is unit three. Okay, so once we define F, uh, F minus G, this basically means to take F of X minus G of X, right? So I'm gonna take the X plus three and I'm gonna minus the X minus three. Notice that when I plug in the whole function, I always put it in parentheses. If I don't, I will get the wrong answer, okay? So I do, and then I decide later whether or not I need them. There's no exponent and there's no coefficient here to distribute, so I don't need these first set of parentheses. However, I don't have an exponent here, but I do have a negative one coefficient, don't I? And that has to get distributed to get rid of the parentheses. So negative times a positive is negative. Negative times a negative will turn it to positive. So these guys actually cancel out, but I'm left with what? What number will I get? Six, not zero, right? They have two pluses. So we've got to add them together. Let's see, that is an option. It is option B. Now 19 is similar, but this one's not subtraction. What is this one? Multiplication. And my functions change, so give me a second to write these down. Okay, so now we're gonna do, this means to do f of x times g of x, okay? So I'm basically doing x squared times 7x minus 7. How do you multiply one term times two terms? Do you what's called FOIL? You cannot FOIL, right? FOIL is when you have two terms times another two terms, okay? All you can do here is distribute. So I get 7x cubed minus 7x squared. And that's all I can do with it because I can't combine them, right? Seven X cubed minus seven X squared. It looks like B. Be careful, don't all those look similar if you just glance at it. <laughs> so be very, very careful. And then that one's got the correct powers, but they switched them. And then this one just doesn't have a power. Okay, F slash G X. Ooh, this one wants another domain as well. Okay. So this means to do f of x over g of x. Now, I don't need parentheses here because I already have a bar separating the two fractions, don't I? Okay. So you're just going to put the f of x in the top, and then that g of x is not right. There's not even an x in there. Oh. Okay. I just didn't type it in there. g of x is going to go right underneath that. Okay, and so I cannot simplify this. Normally you would try to factor that, try to factor that, and maybe a factor will cancel, but this don't. And they never did when we were doing them either. So just stay like that. But it does ask you for the domain, okay? And all you have to remember is that when you have fractions here, this bottom cannot equal zero, right? So that's seven X minus three should not equal zero.
which means x cannot equal three sevenths. So I've got to look for the answer that has both of these bits of information on it. So not only does it have to have that function, but it also has to have this. Now notice the way they said it, they didn't put a not equal bar, right? They said all real numbers except this guy, okay? This is just another way of saying x cannot be three sevenths. It could be anything else, just not three sevenths, okay? So it's the same thing. And then this does match what we had, right? But notice that there's two of them and they're kind of similar, but not really. Here's another one that's got a minus in the front. So be careful, be careful, be careful, okay? But this one looks like C. One more of these function thingies and then we'll get into unit four. Because unit four, we started with that little circle. Okay, so 21 had this function for f, this function for g, and then it asked me for f plus g of 3. Remember, I've been writing what those little things mean, right? So this one means f of 3 plus g of 3, which basically means you're going to plug in 3 into f, and then you're going to plug in 3 into g and see what all you get, right? And then combine it all together. So when I plug in 3 into f, I get this expression. And when I plug in 3 into g, I get this expression, OK? And we'll follow our order of operations. We'll do what's inside those big brackets first before we can add the two answers, right? So in here, I have to do the 9 plus the 2, which is 11. And in here, 3 minus 4 is negative 1. What is 11 plus negative 1? It's 10. And if you don't know, you can put it in your calculator, right? 11 plus negative 1. And it does tell you. Okay. So I always like, if I'm like, uh, and I just hesitate for a second, I grab the calculator and I just put it in there because my brain's not computing. Okay. Let's see if that's even an option over here. I hope it is. Yeah. Let's be careful. They also have negative 10. So ours is E. So f of x is x cubed, g of x is x minus 2, and they want me to do f of g. That one you can look at, but I'm going to write it down, okay? When you write f of g, it literally means f of g, okay? which means if I stick the G function inside of this parentheses, it would be X minus two, wouldn't it? <coughs> and then if I stick this inside F, it would mean that I have X minus two cubed. You see that? And that's all we needed to do. So we just need to look for this expression in our choices. I think I saw it. It is B. Okay, what does this one want? It says F of X equals three minus x squared. And it says, identify the vertex and axis of symmetry. I'm writing some stuff down and then I'm gonna talk about it. Okay. So I really can't look at that and just know I can. Negative means it's going to go downward, and positive 3 means it goes up. So it's probably 1, this first one, A. Um, yeah, those are not it. And that ain't it. So it's probably A. 
But how would I know that that's the vertex and that's the axis of symmetry? I'm going to show you how to figure that out, okay? Just in case the one you get is not just a simple transformation, okay? So this is the function that they gave us. And then we need to find the vertex and the axes of symmetry. For the axes of symmetry, it's just x equals h, whatever that h value is, okay? Now, in order for us to find that h, we have to do negative b over 2a. In order for us to find that k value, we just plug in whatever number we get for this part into the function, and we'll get that y value that goes with it, okay? So let's see, though. Here, I'm going to write this in order because I got some things missing, don't I? I have a negative x squared. I have no x's, and I have a positive 3, don't I? It's important to write it like that. Because A is negative one, but what is B? B is zero. And the common mistake that's gonna happen here is people are gonna use three for B because they're not gonna realize that B is what's in front of X and there's no X, there's just an X squared, okay? So that means H is gonna be negative zero over two times negative one. No matter what's at the bottom, it's gonna be zero, isn't it? And then if I want to find k, I'm plugging 0 into my function, which I just end up with 3. So that means my vertex is going to be the point h, k, and my axis of symmetry is going to be x equals the h value. And what was the h value? 0. Now x equals to 0. Here's where x equals 0. This is that line x equal to zero. Isn't that the y axis? Okay. So if you do get actually zero, then it is the y axis, which explains why it said that the vertex was zero, three, and then the axis was the y axis. Okay. But this stuff is good stuff for like forming the lies, right? If you need some. So I think it should be A. Let me write that down. A. Now, I'm going to do 24, but then I'm going to stop after 24. We'll do the other ones another time. Okay, so in 24 says find two positive real numbers whose product is a maximum. The sum is 140. What does product mean? Anybody remember what product means? Did again? Not addition. Multiplication, yes. So I've got two things here. Um, I have that the sum is 140. Is that what it said? I just want to make sure. Yes, sum is 140. So I don't know what the numbers are. So I'm going to say x and y. So when I sum those together, I get 140, right? But it wants me to maximize the product, which means it wants me to maximize x times y. So that's like if my function were x times y. And this is the function they want me to maximize, OK? Right now, the only way we know how to maximize, you will be able to maximize it a different way when you get to calculus. But right now, the only thing we know how to maximize are quadratics. And that's it. Because we know that the vertex is going to be the maximum or the minimum, OK? So what we need to do is we need to use some substitution in here to make this look like a quadratic. Not only that, if this says f of x, you cannot have a y in there, right? This should not have a y. So I need to plug in something for y. I need to have x times something instead of the y, okay? So if we go over here and we solve for y, we'll know what to plug in there. So if I minus x on both sides, I get that y equals 140 minus x, don't I? Okay. Now I know what to plug in for y. And when I distribute this x over here, I get 140x minus x squared. And now it's a quadratic, isn't it? 
Okay. So if I want the maximum, I need to get that vertex. Okay. So we need to do the H part, which is negative V over 2A. Here's a tricky part. What is B? It is the 140. It's what's in front of X, right? A is what's in front of X squared. So what is that? Negative one. So I end up with negative 140 over negative two, which is a positive 70. And if I wanna find the K, I just plug that 70 into my function. So let's see, what is that? Uh, 140 times 70, 9800 zero, zero, minus 70 squared, 4900. Zero, zero. So I just get 4900. Now, I don't know what the question asked though specifically. Oh, it said find the two numbers that had this. So really, I just needed to know um, the x value there, right? So the max is at, um, what was it, 70? X equals 70, okay? Now you have to be careful because I can't use this number here. This is the Y, but it's the F of X kind of Y value. It's not this Y value from over here, okay? Remember, you were doing a function and you were maximizing that function, right? But I can find that Y value. How do I find it? I think it's gonna be the same number, isn't it? If I do Y equals to 140 minus this X, if I plug that X into there, I get that Y is also equal to 70, don't I? Okay. Now let's think about this for a second, okay? If my two numbers are both 70, will their sum be 140? And will their product be this maximum product? It will, right? 70 times 70 is going to be this number, okay? So it does meet all the criteria. And so then it's gonna be option C. Okay, now this one's another one very similar, but we'll do that one in the next class. We've already gotten through almost 